Okay, this is a uh, demonstration of TrustCAD, what you can do with it. Uh, TrustCAD is a program that allows you to draw uh, timber roof trusses and floor trusses in AutoCAD. It's a uh, plug-in software. So once you've installed it, uh, we go up to the menu here and we'll start off with our first truss, which is an A-frame type truss. So we'll click on that. Now, the first thing it asks us for is an insertion point. And the picture I've got here is of uh, two timber stud walls. Um, so we'll click on start up one stud wall and the next thing it asks us is to click on uh, either another point for the width or we can enter uh, using the keyboard but we'll just click on the other side of the stud wall. Now the next thing it asks for is the roof pitch uh, which is in degrees. Um, let's just put in 30 degrees for now. It'll ask us for our overhang. Uh, let's perhaps put 600 and the thickness of the truss. Uh, standard is 90 millimeters uh, here in Australia. Uh, you can just press enter for 90 mil or you can type in a thicker uh, dimension if you want to have a thicker truss. So let's press enter and there's our roof truss. Um, so it's put in our timber webs and it's got yeah, all our top cords and so forth, bottom cord in there and uh, nail plates. Uh, all these nail plates, um, despite the fact that they're showing white on the screen, uh, often white when you plot in AutoCAD will come out black, these won't, these will just come out uh, white themselves. Um, another thing we can do, now we've got a truss here, is we can uh, put on some uh, roof tiles. So we go down to our menu again, we go to uh, tile roof patterns and click on that. Now it asks us to pick the bottom of the rafter and it'll ask us to pick the top of the rafter. And there you go, it's put in our uh, battens, uh, timber battens with the roof tiles. Uh, alternatively, we can do it with a sheet roof. So you go to the menu again, and we go to sheet roof battens. Click that, again, ask us for the bottom of the rafter. Now ask for the top of the rafter. Now in this one, it asks for the batten spacings. So the default is 600. Uh, we can leave it at that and just press enter and it draws in the battens with the uh, sheet roof lines. Now, here we'll do another type of truss. We'll do a scissor truss. So we'll go up to the menu again and we'll click on the third one down on the menu called uh, roof truss scissor elevation. Again, ask us for an insertion point and we'll click on the other side for the width again and ask us for the external roof pitch, 30 degrees and now ask this for an internal roof pitch. Uh, now, as a good rule of thumb, um, you should do at least half of what you did for external roof pitch. You can sometimes go a little bit higher, but um, we'll go 15 degrees. And ask for an overhang, perhaps we'll go 300 this time. And ask this again for the thickness, and we'll just click uh, enter for 90 mil again. And then we have our, uh, this is a roof truss. Now, this rafter here and this rafter here, or, or top cord of the uh, off the truss, that's the 30 degree pitch that we entered at the beginning, and this pitch in here is the internal pitch that we entered 15 degrees. So that's our roof truss of the scissor. Now if we just delete that, and we can now look at doing a um, floor truss. So we'll do a floor truss elevation. So we'll click that, ask for the insertion point, ask us for our width or to the other side, and ask us for a height. Now, um, we can either pick a point uh, or we can just move the mouse in the direction we want the truss to go up for the height, and we can enter a dimension. Uh, standard here would be about 300 millimeters, so we'll enter 300, and there's our roof truss, oh, sorry, our floor truss. Um, the great thing about the program too is at the moment we've noticed that we're clicking from left to right on the screen to do these trusses. Uh, it's programmed in such a way that if we were to run that program again, we could pick this side and then this side and I'll just click a point this time and still the, you know, the truss still works. Um, sometimes when people program in AutoCAD uh, to draw things, it'll only generally uh, work clicking from left to right, otherwise it'll do all funny things, but the way that TrustCAD's designed, uh, that won't be an issue. 
you can yeah, pick from whatever side you like. And it's the same with the uh, roof dressers as well. Uh, another thing you can do is change the color defaults of what we're looking at. So for instance, we can change the, uh, the truss elevation color, which is what we're looking at right now, which is that green color. So I'll click on that, and at the bottom of the screen here, it'll ask us um, enter the new color for the truss. Uh, we can enter any number from 1 to 255, or if you know the specific color, um, the standard uh, AutoCAD colors are such as magenta, cyan, red, green, yellow, white. If you want to just ent enter the words, that'll also work. Um, so we could type in, um, perhaps we'll type in cyan and hit enter. And as you can see, it's changed the color of our uh, trusses. It'll change the color of the ones over here too. Changes all the trusses in elevation. Um, that settings can be changed at any time. Um, it's a permanent setting, so even if we closed AutoCAD and opened it up again in a new drawing, it'll uh, still be the same color until we change it again through the layer defaults. Um, we can also uh, change the color of our nail plates. Uh, at the moment, it's a bit hard to see here on the screen, but that's sort of a, um, we'll delete that if we can. Oop, let's explode that right for a moment. And we've got a outline here, Oop, which is white. Oh, it's because I've exploded it. Okay. Um, generally speaking, with the nail plates, if I click on the nail plate, you can see up here in the layers, it has trust nail plate. Um, so we can change the color. As you can see, the layer at the moment is red. Um, so we can set that default uh, the nail plate color to perhaps uh, green this time. Type green. And you zoom in, you can slightly see it's green, but you can mainly see in the, in the layers here that that layer is now uh, changed to green. Um, and this here is in section. So, and so as, as are the tiles and so forth. So we can go there to the menu, to the color defaults, and change the truss section to uh, perhaps a color. I oh, will just enter a numeric value this time, perhaps uh, 155. And we've got a sort of a dark bluey color there. It's a bit hard to see, but um, you can see how that basically works. Um, there are some other trusses in here. This is the, uh, the mono truss. So if we just go over here and we'll click an insertion point. Let's move the mouse in the direction we want to go this time. Um, we'll just and instead of clicking, we'll just enter a width. Perhaps we'll type in uh, 2,000. That's for two meters. Uh, you can ask for the roof pitch. Perhaps we'll go 25 degrees. Uh, ask for an overhang, uh, 600. And ask for a top cord extension. Uh, in many cases, you might just want to have that at zero. Uh, I'll just put in uh, 300 for now, and I'll explain that in a moment. And now it asks again for the thickness of the truss, so we'll just hit enter again for 90 mil. So as you can see, it's created our mono truss. Um, this portion here is our overhang, and this portion up here, this is the top cord overhang. Um, yep, sometimes it can be quite useful. Uh, the thing about it too is when it works out the dimension, it's working out the dimension from the back of this this uh, web here to to the top of top of the um, the extension, so um, it's not working out when we entered uh, 300. It's not working out 300 from there to there. It's 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 working out 300 from there out to there. So that's that's 300 there, that line from there. So it's easy to work out if you say wanted to, you know, take that truss out to this distance. Say it was 1500 or so. Uh, you just type in 1500 and it'll go out. You don't need to work out anything mathematically for that. So uh, it works it all out for you. Um, same thing with the reverses, the reversal of the, uh, the trusses. If we uh, again do a mono truss, but this time we click uh, right to left. Again, we enter a roof pitch. Perhaps we'll put 35 degrees this time. An overhang of maybe uh, 150, and a top cord extension. Perhaps we'll put zero this time, and maybe we'll make the thickness of the truss perhaps uh, 120 this time. And as you see, it's a lot thicker. Uh, we don't have the top cord extension because we hit zero. We have a smaller overhang, as you can see, thicker webs all around on the truss. But the main thing uh, that's showing there is that we can click from right to left or left to right to generate our trusses, and it's not going to do anything funny in the program. 
Um, sometimes, yeah, they're all, you know, lines can shoot off all different places if it's not programmed correctly. We also have the, um, the other mono truss, which is the scissor truss. And that's basically, yeah, half of a scissor truss. So let's, um, again, select a pitch. We'll say 35 degrees for the external and perhaps we'll say 20 for the internal pitch. A bit higher than half, but we'll give that a go anyway. And overhang perhaps of uh, 400. And truss thickness of 90 mils. Hit enter. And as you can see, there's our uh, mono scissor truss. So that's the basics of uh, TrustCAD. Um, it's, a, it's a real time saver in terms of drafting, uh, doing a lot of these things, especially if, you, if you're doing a lot of uh, particularly residential um, uh, houses or apartments. Um, can really save an awful lot of time. Um, so yeah, it's uh, worth, worth at least uh, downloading and having a look at and uh, giving a go. Um, thank you.